So hi again for this uh, last lecture of the term. Um, apologies for the technical problems. Uh, and um, let's start with some reminders as usual. It's even in focus now. <laughs> well, more or less, but. So we're looking at uh, Friedman, Lemaitre, Robinson, Walker matrix. The famous scale factor times a fixed time independent metric. And K is <clears throat> zero plus minus one depending upon whether the universe is spatially positively curved, spatially flat, or whether it is negatively curved. And we need the Einstein equations. So T mu nu will take uh, uh, a form which is called perfect fluid, not quite right. So uh, plus P and uh, what else? Uh, yes, uh, radiation equation of state. This would be um, P is equal rho three. And uh, the equations are, well, the Friedman equation, I'm running out of space. This uh, small light board is annoying. Well, I'm not running out of space yet, but I will want to keep a few things on the board. So, um, well, HK we have. So the Friedman equation, uh, will it fit here? Let's hope. Okay, well, that's, that's already this. And there is uh, something which can be thought of the continuity equation. which would be d over dt of rho r3 plus p d r3 over dt is equal to zero. So let me remind you what I told you last time. If you take a metric like that, uh, then this metric is compatible with an energy momentum tensor, which looks like that. Uh, if P is zero, that's something that you know already pretty well, that's the dust case. Uh, but uh, if you have a fluid which represents radiation, then the equation of state is P is equal to rho over three. Uh, and if you write down uh, the Einstein equations, for this metric with this energy momentum tensor, uh, then you're left with two equations. Maybe let me call this one C for the continuity equation. First order equation, uh, which I've written in this funny form because it's a more convenient one. And uh, the key equation is the Friedman equation. So, so, of course, the way to do it, you just take this metric, calculate its curvature tensor, calculate its Riemann tensor, uh, calculate the thing which goes into Einstein equations, and you're going to end with a mess of equations. So you have to massage them a little bit, and after a lot of massaging, you're going to end up here. Uh, what you could, for example, say, well, this can't be right because uh, 
Einstein equation are second order equations, and here there is uh, only first derivatives, right? So indeed, I mean, this is correct, but you need to, to do some work to get that. So it's not just take Einstein equations and get this, but a little, that's all explained in my lecture notes. So, um, and uh, in any case, that's the two equations that one uses in this kind of cosmology. And uh, because there aren't any more uh, and, um, and that's it. So uh, just a short comment about this radiation equation of state. Um, or a, a Mickey Mouse derivation of this, right? So, so, the, uh, so this is not a derivation, but an argument why this is resolvable. One I gave you was that the trace of the energy momentum tensor should be, uh, should be zero. Another one uh, could go uh, as, as follows. Uh, if you take a plane wave um, on Minkowski, um, then you'll find that t mu nu is uh, a function times k mu k nu, where k nu is this uh, uh, four vector, right? So this is a calculation which you perhaps going to do in the exercises or or which is done in the uh, which I recommend to do for it for you to do as an exercise in any case that's not a difficult one so so it looks pretty much like uh, uh, the so you, you should compare this for a dust uh, then this would be rho u mu u and u right so for a dust the energy momentum tensor would be just the full velocity of dust multiplied by the rest energy density. Well, here you have, it's in the same spirit, except that of course, this is not a, a full velocity of anything, but a, the wave vector, which is null, right? So here this is, uh, this satisfies uh, uh, G of U U is equal to minus one. And here, of course, we have, uh, G of KK is equal to zero. So this is a null vector. So, but this doesn't quite look like that at all, right? Because here you have, uh, uh, well, a U, which is time-like. Of course, this U for, uh, for the Friedman metric is just D over DT. So how is this compatible with that? Well, so one way of arguing would be the follow. So supposing that you're looking at photons coming from this direction, right? Then, so you have a detector and uh, you're going to see a plane wave coming from you. So you're going to get to see something like uh, T uh, mu nu will be a uh, rho. So if K is just, uh, one, one, zero, zero. Then you're going to see from this direction, you're going to see rho and a lot of zeros, just according to this uh, rho, zero, 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 right? So that's what you see with your detector. A detector actually detects the energy density of the field, right? So it's for each photon coming from this direction, going to see something like that. So if there's many of them, then of course you're going to, this is going to be added and you'll see something like that as a metric. So this is in the X direction. Now, suppose I'm looking at the, uh, well, this is X. So Y should be actually backwards for me if I want to use a, uh, a, a oh, let me look at, look at the Z direction. Okay, so this is X, this is Z. So I have the same thing, right? So I'm in a cosmology, cosmic microwave background coming from all directions. I'm filtering photons coming from this direction. And from this direction, I'm going to get the same thing as here, but not a zero here. I'm going to get a row and, and same energy density as before. Right? So, so we had a row density coming from here. 
And this density has nothing to do with uh, this one. So there's, and it's the same because it's isotropic. So I'm going to get a row from this direction. And finally, by looking at the set direction, again, I'm not going to get a zero here about the row, but another row, right? So, <laughs> so this is of course not a proof of anything, but somehow you get three row, 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 right? But this is uh, exactly what, what we had here. That now, if you rename rho as p, then you get uh, um, p over three, right? Then you're going to get uh, no. <laughs> uh, if you rename, yeah, if you rename rho as p. Now, if you rename rho as rho over three, okay, then you're going to get rho, uh, rho over three, uh, three times. Okay, so, and of course, this is the total energy density. This was an energy density coming from one direction. This is one coming from another one. I think that there's maybe a way of making a real argument out of that, uh, but uh, I leave you brutal with it. But anyway, so that's my Mickey Wise of Mickey Mouse way of seeing this. Good. So now the question we want to address. Uh, uh, yeah. So what? Uh, how do solutions of Uh, of the Friedman equation and the continuity equation look like. And the answer is going to be, uh, I could just, if we had a one or lecture more, I would just explain how this comes about from solving this equation C, but uh, we're going to make an answer for C, which is that, uh, rho is a constant over R3 plus another constant over R4. Uh, this part of the ansatz is obvious if you think about the case a p equals zero. Because if you take the equation P without uh, the pressure term, then this is the only solution, right? So if there's no pressure term here, then you get uh, C is the same as B over DT of rho R3 equals zero. And this is exactly the solution. So, when p equals zero, this is not an answer. This is the obvious unique solution. Now, when uh, p is not zero, uh, the claim is that, uh, so let me call this equation one. So claim uh, then uh, one is good for, um, well, for solve C, right? And is a solution. If P radiation or P is equal uh, one third of rho radiation and uh, we'll see what rho radiation is, right? So in other words, rho has two parts, a matter part and the radiation part and P equal one third of rho radiation is actually the right thing to do here. So let's try to, to justify this. Uh, good, so what do I need? I want to keep this one.
Well, there was this worrisome noise, but I hope that you can still hear, hear me. Okay. And you can still see me. Yeah. So my continuity equation is gone, so I have to write it again. Uh, D over dt rho r three plus p d over uh, dt is equal to zero. So um, and so the answer is. Uh, I don't have to write it again. Uh, rho is equal a constant over R3 plus another constant over R4. Uh, so let's see how we solve this. Uh, so, so we're checking, uh, just put it in. So we have D over DT of rho r3 which is k plus e over r plus p uh, well this one is 3 p r square dr over dt equals zero so this is c right so c is equivalent to this one Let's see, so K is a constant, this goes away, that's nothing astonishing, we've already seen that this part solved the equation we speak was zero, but other than that we get minus epsilon over R square, uh, D R over DT from here. So, well, there's an obvious solution, r dot equals zero, but let's assume it's not because that's not interesting. Uh, then this is equivalent to what? Then dr over dt factors out and we get three p r square is equal epsilon over r square. Uh, and this is gone, right? So the dr over dt cancels out. So in other words, P is equal epsilon over this is a square, right? So it looks like a three, but it's a two. Right? So so this is a, right, so this is this two here coming from differentiating R three. I part derivative of three, three r square, three p r square from this one is equal epsilon over r square from this. So p is uh, epsilon over three r four. So if we call this rho radiation and we call this rho matter, This is one third of rho radiation. So in this model, uh, we have a lambda. We have uh, space curvature. We have uh, matter, uh, which is in form of a dust. Uh, described by epsilon and we have radiation. So uh, radiation, which in fact is, uh, if you try to feed the model to data, radiation is a mixture of 
electromagnetic radiation and neutrinos. So in other words, this epsilon is actually the sum of two parts, one coming from uh, Maxwell fields, another one coming from neutrinos. So radiation described by, by E. Uh, by K. Uh, did I write the constants? Yeah, I, I probably uh, messed up the constants uh, compared to the, the notes. Sorry about this. I mean, whatever I wrote so far is okay, but uh, uh, matter is described not by, uh, well, as I wrote here by K, and radiation is described by epsilon, but I, I just, I want to call this epsilon, and I want to call this K. Apologies. So that to be consistent with the notes. Apologies for the mess. That doesn't change the calculation, just exchanges the, the constants, right? So let, let me do it again for your sake. So we put epsilon over R3 plus K over R4. So now this would become an epsilon, this would become a K. You don't have to write this, but if you just want to make sure that I'm not cheating or anything. So then uh, this epsilon here would become a K here. And uh, we're back at, at where we started, right? So. Good. So we have an ansatz and we have solved equation C. So it remains to solve F, right? So we have four constants. Right? Solve F and get a model of the universe. And then fit the constants to the data, right? So choose the constants yeah, so so once again, we take a, 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 the metric of this form with this ansatz for. Uh, the energy density here, we reduce the, we solve one of the Einstein equations. All that remains is this first order ODE for the scale factor. And of course, uh, you know that you can solve it for any initial data, uh, no matter what the constants are. And uh, we're going to, to do this. So now, of course, uh, solving this uh, for all data, you, you can't. So, so there's this. You can't do it explicitly, but you can do it numerically, right? So numerically, there is no difficulty doing this, and numerically, there is therefore no difficulty fitting the solution of these equations to the data, and so the typical solutions will will look like that. Just trying to squeeze in a little room before I start the raising. Now, that's not a good idea. Okay. So, yeah, so let me erase all this. Uh, maybe before you erase, um, I have a question. Yes. What, what part of this is now input and what are we solving for? So are P and, and Rho both things we are solving for or is P an input? Or so you're you're absolutely uh, justified in asking this. How can I just solve this system of equations in general, right? So oh, this is an ansatz for the metric which we derived from some principles, but at the end it's an ansatz, right? I mean, who says that the universe should have these properties of uh, isotropy and homogeneity and, and so forth and this congruence. 
So good. But given that we willing to assume that, then this is uh, uh, an ODE for R. Uh, well, this K is supposed to be a constant. So there's no issue about it. Lambda is a constant. There's no issue about it. So the question is, what is rho? Right? And rho, you can get from this equation if you know what uh, P of rho is. Right? So if you, you write P as a function of rho, uh, then uh, you can solve this equation, right? Uh, well, a couple system of equations F and C, because then you get a, a closed system of uh, a first order system of ordinary differential equations. Uh, might be nonlinear if P is nonlinear, but who cares, right? So you have an equation. Uh, d over d rho and d over dr here, which you can just eliminate. d over dr you can eliminate from this equation, for example. So you get d over d rho from this term. And then if you know that p is a specific function of rho, then uh, you just get a, a first order OD, which you can solve for any initial data. So what is put in hand is this uh, requirement that. Uh, uh, that uh, that row is of this form here, right? Which you can probably justify. We can say you can rather than saying that this is an ansatz, you could say that row should be of the form row matter plus row pressure, row radiation, and impose that row radiation has this pressure of. So if you put this in here, you're going to get this form, right? So this is, uh, uh, I believe, I've never really thought about this carefully, so I don't want to make too much, too strong a claim, but I think that if you make this uh, ansatz, uh, then this will be the solution of this ansatz. So in some sense, That's one way of viewing this. So you're saying what the equation of states of this uh, matter feeling the universe is. Good. So okay, any other? You. Yes. Any other questions? But if you have uh, another uh, idea what P should be, then you can just solve this numerically or maybe if you like explicitly and get uh, your favorite new model of the universe. I shouldn't have erased this, but never mind. Yeah, so this uh, wrong notation for E and, uh, and K is another proof that I'm a, more a mathematician than a physicist because, uh, I mean, for me, it's just constants. Who cares how you call them? But of course, uh, uh, they have important physical interpretation and, and it's good to have them consistently whenever they do.
we probably will not need the continuity equation anyway because we've solved it, but uh, Yes, so uh, so let me just then write this here. So rho is equal to epsilon over uh, three plus k over r four, and this is uh, rho m, and this is rho r. I, I'm I'm fed up writing radiation all the time, so I'm just going to say rho r here right so we are in a universe uh, with these properties and so now yes so this is what we wanted to do uh, how does typical solutions look like you've already seen this in this uh, lecture i had on a, uh, you know, some kind of introductory stuff but the models are well typical uh, solution there's almost always a big bang and uh, and I think always means almost always means all always except in a case where uh, the, there's one special solution where r is constant all the time, but this is unstable, right? So so this we just forget it, and so so either you have a big bang to big crunch. Either you have a big bang to big freeze, so the universe expands forever. The energy, uh, the radius grows. Uh, the energy of radiation decays. The energy of matter decays, and um, so the temperature therefore decays, and we all freeze to death. Which sounds like a good perspective, maybe if you go out today in the streets, but uh, maybe a little too much. And of course, uh, if you have a family of solutions, some of them do this, and some of them do that, there should be a, 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 a some kind of critical one, right? So there's a, a intermediate one. So there's a critical solution always, which comes with this, which is a uh, which might go to a constant or which might grow but at a smaller rate than than the exploding ones but that's the typical picture and uh, what we want to understand is uh, which ones are which right so which are which ones are rich which ones and so let's look at a few special solutions And uh, well, this equation, you can in fact find uh, a few explicit solutions. Uh, but uh, as I said, numeric, generically you need numerics. Uh, so let's do uh, the simplest ones would be lambda equals zero is equal K. Uh, and equal say capital K equals zero as well. Uh, then we get three r dot square over r square. K is zero, this is gone. Lambda is gone, so we only get kappa rho. And kappa rho, since big K is also gone, gone we get kappa e over r cube. And uh, then, well, this one I can solve. So I'm going to get out of this R prime square is equal if I multiply by R cube, I'm going to get R, R prime square is a constant. All right, so multiply by R cube, divide by three, you get a constant here which is the same as uh, 
square root of r r dot is another constant so say c1 well this one would be actually the square root of, of the thing by the way we of course want the function r to be positive right it comes with a square, so there could be negative ones. Zeros are precisely the uh, very bad points in our universe, either a big crunch of where everything is squeezed to, to, uh, to zero size or everything is coming from an explosion. Uh, and so, but then we are interested in the region where this is positive. Uh, let's see, so this is probably the derivative of r to three halves or something like that. And if I differentiate, so let, let me just do this, then this is uh, three half uh, square root of r times r dot. And this is going to be then three half of c1 which is going to be C2. Good, but then I can integrate this to get R3 half is C2T, which is the same as saying that R is another constant C3 times T2 to two thirds. So, uh, in fact, we, we, we're going to see that this is exactly one of these critical solutions which are intermediate between uh, various things if uh, we see this family of, uh, of solutions. But now we have a, an explicit solution for the scale factor of the universe, no cosmological constant, spatially flat, because k equals zero corresponds to this metric being flat in space, the space part of the metric is flat. Uh, there's no radiation, only dust, only uh, mine. So we get uh, this solution. Uh, so uh, the, the, on this graph, it's going to look, uh, well, let me make another graph. Right, so this is, something like that right so it's a uh, the slope here is infinite because if you differentiate t to two thirds you're going to get t to minus one third so the slope is infinite so you're starting from a, a big bang and you're expanding uh, the universe is expanding forever however if you look at uh, the derivative or uh, of r, then write r dot is uh, two thirds c three t to minus uh, one third. So the rate of expansion goes to zero as t goes to infinity. Right? So it keeps expanding always, but the rate of expansion goes to zero. And if you remember what the Hubble function was, r dot over r. I'm sure you don't, but I do. Then, so this is the Hubble function. Uh, then let's see, so we get two thirds C3 T to minus one three uh, divided by C3 T to two thirds, which is, Two thirds C three cancels out one over T. So we have our Hubble function, and uh, we stare at this Hubble function, and we say, well, uh, today this gives H zero which was h of today. Is 2 over 3 t0. 
but then I can calculate the age of the universe out of this, right? So the age of the universe is T0 is two thirds of one over H0. And if you remember what I said last time, you're going to say, well, no, no way. Uh, because uh, one over H zero was about uh, 14 giga years. And this was about right for star formations. But if this is about right for stars, this is two thirds uh, of being right for stars. So no good. Right. This is not a good model. Uh, a model where we have no lambda or no K or no capital K is not a good model. There's no way we can fit it with the observations. Good, so this is uh, one special solution. Let's uh, try a few other ones. Uh, good. So this was a, a matter-dominated solution, right? So matter-dominated universe, well, uh, at least with lambda equal uh, k equals zero. So another example, lambda equals zero is equal k, and uh, but now this time uh, epsilon is zero. So we get uh, three r dot, so this is the Friedman equation, uh, square k is zero over r square is equal, lambda is zero and kappa rho is just kappa k over r four. So I multiply by r four and I'm going to get and divide by three, I get r square, r dot square is equal to constant, which is the same as saying that r, r dot is a constant, which is the same as saying that r square dot is another constant, well, actually 2c1, So if I integrate this 
and choose the integration constant so that the big bang is at zero, I'm going to get that R square is equal to C1t. In other words, R is equal to uh, another constant C2 square root of t. So if we just do the plots, uh, the previous one was t to two thirds. So does how does this one go? Uh, obviously, at t equals zero, it also does starts at zero. Um, so this was uh, this one was. Um, uh, k equals zero, right? So uh, k equals zero. Um, well, a constant times k equal to t uh, to two thirds. Square root of t, is this uh, steeper at the origin or? Or less steep? So for small t, is it above or below? Anyone can help me with this? Well, if we don't, we're not sure, so let's see. So we want to uh, compare a constant times square root of t. We want to compare it to uh, another constant, but so I can just absorb this constant uh, to this. So uh, if I take uh, a square, I want to compare, uh, taking a square preserves the inequality, right? So this will be the same as another constant C prime T and comparing it to four thirds, right? So for large, large T, uh, which one is larger? T43 is larger, right? So C prime time is smaller than T4 third. And small t, uh, which one is smaller? All right, so, so C prime t is, uh, well, or, or t four thirds is t one third times t, right? And this is going to zero, but this is smaller, right? So C prime t is smaller. Uh, is, is larger than t four thirds. So in other words, do I have it right? Seems right so far. I, I wrote it the wrong way. And then the very last step maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so everything was okay and up to here. So for small t, it's smaller. And for large t, it's also smaller. No, this is just uh, no. Right? So for t to four, large t should be with t less than t to four thirds. Should be the other way around for small t. This one is wrong. No, and the first one's right, and the second one should be the other way around. So what I had was correct. Yeah. Okay. Good. So for small t. This function is under here. And for large t, it crosses over, right? Right. 
that the two no, now you got the two functions confused, I think. <laughs> no, it's the wrong way. <laughs> uh, okay. Because this was t, t two thirds, and t two thirds was the one which is smaller for. Okay. We'll get there. Good. So it's larger here and smaller there. But still growing, right? So it's not clear on, from my picture, but it still grows, right? Is this correct now? Yeah. So this is a C square root of T. You know, I have to draw it again because you're going to think that I don't know that a square root of t goes to infinity if, if it goes like that. So, so we have one which goes like this. This is c square root of t. And we have the other one which goes like this, which is. C uh, prime t two two thirds. <laughs> I hope I have it right. It's going to be on YouTube, so I'm going to be the laughing stock of all the mathematicians in the world if if I have this one wrong. Thinking, willing to accept the challenge. Okay, good. So so this is the calculation, but still, uh, is this a good model? And the answer is uh, again no, right? So if you calculate the Hubble function, which was r dot over r, uh, r dot was now uh, so. Where is our r? Right. So r is which one are we doing now? We we're doing the square root, right? So the square root. Uh, so the derivative is going to be c2 uh, over 2 square root of 2. And from 1 over r, we get times c2 times another square root of 2. So this is 1 over 2t, which means that h0 is 1 half of uh, t0, which means that I'm really bad with my <laughs> uh, blackboard space now, which means that T zero is one half of H uh, of one over H naught. And this is again too small, right? So one over H naught was uh, already too small. Uh, again, too small, even worse, right? Again, too small. So in other words, a universe, lambda equals zero, k equals zero, epsilon equals zero, no way. So we need a mixture of all these. And uh, And let's try to understand uh, the general behavior of these solutions then. So I have this beautiful big light board in the next room, which I can't use because I don't know how to fix the sound and I don't know how to fix the focus. It's embarrassing.
So now uh, general properties, right? So general properties. What could we say about uh, solutions of these equations? Now, uh, if rho is, has this form, then rho goes to zero as r goes to infinity, always, right? So let's see. If we take for large r, This goes to zero. This is positive. So let me just uh, write it uh, uh, like that. Three r prime square over r square is equal kappa rho plus lambda minus k over r square. So if lambda is, so this goes to zero. Well, one has to be a little careful because it's uh, multiplied by R square, right? So let me just uh, do it more carefully. R dot square is equal, uh, if I multiply by, divide by three, so I get one third. And I multiply by R square, I get kappa rho R square, so which is epsilon over rho plus kappa K over R square uh, plus lambda. Lambda picks up R square. And um, and this becomes minus k. So this goes to zero, right? So this is the large R case. This goes to zero. This is going to go to uh, plus minus infinity. Well, this is a constant, but this is positive. So you immediately see the following. If lambda is negative, uh, then we get a problem. Um, Because the left hand side is uh, is smaller than zero, uh, larger or equal to zero. Sorry, the left hand side is larger or equal than zero, but the right hand side uh, is going to minus infinity. Right. So what's the conclusion here? Well, one can we can't get to large R, so at some point going to collapse. Yeah, so one conclusion is mathematics is inconsistent, but we knew it anyway. Uh, I, I've known it many times when doing various calculations when I get five equals zero and I just spend uh, a month trying to understand how I got there. But uh, here the answer is that uh, R cannot get too large, right? So if lambda is zero, so... Uh, if lambda equals zero, R never gets too, gets too large. And this is therefore, there is uh, uh, always a big crunch.
Well, this is always a big crunch. Is oh, I haven't justified this correctly, but that is true, right? So, so now for lambda equals zero, you always be in one of these models where you get a, a big crunch. Never going to get a big freeze. Good. So that's one thing we can say about this equation. Uh, and uh, well. Uh, on the other hand, if R is, if lambda is positive, then we get an approximate equation. Uh, lambda is larger than zero, then both sides are. So this becomes small, this becomes small, this is bounded, this grows. So we get an approximate equation that R dot square is like uh, lambda over three R square which we can solve uh, that uh, we get an, what I saw R dot. If you are in the expanding region, then this is, uh, we take the plus sign here, um, square root of lambda three R, and then R is X, or the constant uh, X lambda three R. And so we are in this situation where we have an exponential expansion. Exponential expansion. Two questions on that. Um, yes. One small one, I think you mean exponential of square root of one third T, not R. Thanks. Uh, and the slightly more conceptual one, um, in the lambda less than zero case, I mean, yet R can't get arbitrarily large, but isn't it also possible that we somehow plateau to, towards some constant value that doesn't- Yes, you know, this can happen certainly, uh, but this is going to be a, a very unstable- Unstable point. again, oh, okay. Right, because that's going to go to a, one of these, uh, uh, right, uh, solutions where R dot goes to a, a constant. So you can mm. just solve this equation and you get something unstable. Right? Yeah. So that's oh, uh, uh, this always yeah, means like that. And the fact that this is a big crunch, I think you just look, uh, you can just check that this function has some convexity properties, right? So that once it, uh, the derivative has become negative, it uh, keeps uh, being negative. Uh, so I, I, this always is a physicist always, okay? So maybe there are some special cases which you, you would need to, to take care of, but I think that this is correct. Good, so uh, now uh, lambda positive, this is uh, actually what uh, our, um, our experiment tells us. Uh, before, let's see how am I doing with time. Do I have time to to do small uh, small time behavior? Uh, not really. <laughs> Good. So we're going to skip uh, uh, small time asymptotics, but or well, I, small small time asymptotics is actually easy to obtain from from this equation. So let me just mention what it is. Um, So I'm not going to do it in detail, but rather fast. So the question is what happens for small r, right? So small r, we want uh, uh, to understand this solution of this equation for small r. And it's almost always a, 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 big, um, a big bang. And again, almost being that there are some special cases like the one where this is uh, 
zero where you won't get a big bang, but I mean it's for small R, then um, what dominates, right? So uh, the dominant uh, term will be if k is not zero, then the dominant term will be r dot square is one third kappa k over r square. And this is the uh, radiation dominated equation, right? Radiation dominated equation. So we know the solution, which was square root, right? So r behaves like a constant times square root of t. Well, but it could happen that k is zero. And if uh, again, small r, but k is equal zero, then, but epsilon than zero, then you're going to get uh, r dot square. The dominant term is obviously this one. And this is the matter dominated equation. And so you get uh, R. This is exactly the equation we already did. R behaves like a constant time T to two thirds. So generically, uh, whenever these two constants are no zero, no matter what lambda and K is, you're going to get this uh, uh, power law behavior for small t, right? And this will be either t to two thirds or square root t, depending upon which case you are. So uh, this is small r's. And now how do we fit all this to observations? Because this is of course the, uh, the key question And uh, for this, one introduces the notion of a critical density. And I'm going to do this right away once I've done some cleaning up here. I thought I had uh, the timing about right to, to do the last part in detail and I'm probably going to run out of a few minutes because of the silly problems with the uh, second light board. But so let me just, uh, uh, I probably have to ask you for a few more minutes. Well, we'll see how it works. Right, so uh, M aim is now to compare uh, with observations. And so how to get some numbers out of this, right? So how to fit this with numbers, given that of course, uh, we don't really know, uh, for example, the radius of the universe, what is the radius of the universe, right? What are, uh, that, that's uh, probably one of the main things here, right? And in this business, you have to, this function R, but what, what is R now? What we can observe is the Hubble constant. So, so uh, we know, uh, so or the answer or the question or the answer, the question would be, can you use uh, H0 to, uh, to, uh, to normalize these equations? And the answer is yes. Uh, so one introduces uh, 
the notion rho critical. And this is uh, the density today, uh, which we would have today. Maybe I should write it, um, which we would have today. in a universe with uh, lambda is equal k is equal capital K is equal zero, which, would, which means that if you use the equation F, uh, then we would have three r dot square over r square today is equal kappa rho critical. And now the thing to note is that this is of course nothing but three times the Hubble constant today. Right? So this is three times well squared. Well, kappa is the constant coming from Einstein equation. So I'd eight pi g over C4 or something in that spirit, right? So this one we know. We know how eight naught square. So we just, uh, uh, this is our definition of this critical density. And now we rewrite the equation F uh, at t equals zero. Um, at t equal t zero, and you divide f by, by kappa rho critical, right? By kappa rho critical. Okay, so, uh, three r dot over r square is just kappa rho critical. So this term is going to give us, when we divide us this, is going to give one. Then we have plus three k over r square. Well, r zero square, this is r zero is r today. So three over k r zero square, and we're dividing by kappa rho critical. Good for this time. From uh, kappa rho over kappa rho critical, we're going to get rho over rho critical. Uh, sorry, I have to do this. Uh, uh, well, that's fine. This is the total row, right? Uh, and and this row, let me just uh, split it into two parts: row matter plus row radiation. And from lambda, we get plus lambda over uh, kappa rho critical. And you know, I mean, I could have already written this, uh, this kappa rho critical is the same as three H not H zero squared here. So right, so I can just do this uh, immediately, right? So change to H I zero square. And this one is uh, also, right? So kappa rho critical is three H zero square. So this is, uh, well, let me just do it in the next equation so that we can see what we're doing. Um, so I'm going just to keep this for the moment or copy this. Six. 
the point is of this equation that you get some kind of balance law, right? You have one is equal as sum of terms. Um, So I get one, if you put this over to the left-hand side, then you're going to get something which is called omega matter, that this is this ratio, plus omega radiation, this is this ratio, plus omega lambda, which is this ratio, and plus omega curvature. Uh, so C here is for curvature. And so let's see, so omega matter is rho m over rho critical. Omega radiation is rho radiation over rho critical. Uh, omega lambda is lambda over three h zero square. And finally, omega curvature is because I've put this on the left hand, right hand side, then this is minus. Okay, and this is what I started doing, right? So, uh, kappa rho critical was three h zero square. So I think it's it shouldn't be ringing. It's off. Complete lack of etiquette, right? Well, how can I have how the lecturer? How can the lecturer have its phone ringing? But this stupid phone is in standby mode. Uh, good. So uh, this becomes mm, uh, unless I made a mistake, it's going to be k over uh, the three goes away because kappa rho critical is three h zero squared. So this is just h zero squared. R zero square. So this is the key equation in cosmology, which you uh, uh, which you feed with the data. And so let me give you the numbers. Omega m is. Well, omega m is a funny number because it has two components. It has a component that we see, and this is called omega baryonic. And there is a component which is dark matter. So there is this annoying thing that universe has a lot of stuff that we don't see. And then, uh, now this one is actually okay because it's telling me that I should stop. So I'm going to give you the numbers and I'm going to stop. So this one is about 0, 0, 004. So in other words, we take this Friedman equation, do the, our observations, uh, feed them to the data to determine the various constants which appear in this model. And that's what we end up with. This is the best fit from the observations here. So this is 0, 0, 004. This is dark matter is 0 0.23. So there's much more stuff that we don't see in the universe than stuff that we see. So this is B is baryonic, right? So baryons means uh, um, stuff that we see in the universe. Uh, omega radiation, I don't know how I get this number because this is uh, 10 to minus five, which is well be below the errors of these guys. But I understand that the way you feed this, that you want to feed this for, uh, uh, you need to feed this for large, for small radii, right? So near the Big Bang, when this part becomes relevant, and if you don't have this uh, tiny component coming from radiation, then uh, uh, the models will not fit, right? In other words, we, we, we know how many uh, cosmic microwave background we have, so we can just, uh, calculate this. As I said, it's way under the arrows here. So maybe it's coming just from the observation from the cosmic microwave background. That would be my bet actually. And I, I should know, but I don't. So uh, 
omega c is easy, so k, k is the best fit is k equals zero. You don't need this term. But of course, if you think about how tiny this r term here is, maybe uh, the zero here is actually not zero. Uh, of course, uh, k is plus minus one zero, and uh, we don't know what r zero is, so this could be still the universe could still have some curvature, space curvature. And the final thing that you need is what? Uh, I think that's it, right? Yeah, lambda. And so omega lambda is uh, uh, 0, 7, 3. Whatever is missing. Okay. So this is the balance equation of the universe. This is the most naive models that you can think of. I'm not going to repeat what I already told you, how naive this is. And so it's just very strange that you can explain the universe with such a naive model. But here we are. Uh, this model has problems. This is called lambda cold dark matter. Uh, it doesn't, uh, the current understanding is that for small r, uh, this is actually wrong. And you need something uh, called inflation to do the right physics uh, for small r uh, lambda but so uh, that's for uh, another lecture so thank you very much for coming uh, time for questions now as many as you want uh, i have a question about yes, the uh, gravitational redshift uh -huh. in the expanding universe Okay. So, so what happens with the energy from the photons? Uh, yes. Uh, the, uh, how does this go? Uh, the universe expands. Uh, the photons are redshifted. But the volume grows. And so the, it ends up that the energy is conserved. Uh, the total energy of photons is conserved. Uh, how does this work here, All right? So if you look at this, this part of the, uh, uh, of the density, right? So the energy goes like uh, one over R4, the volume expands. So this part goes like one over R uh, and Okay, so, so, so you've caught me here. Uh, well, the answer is, uh, this is actually the right formula uh, for conservation of energy of photons. If you take into account, how does it go, right? So if the number of photons is conserved, okay. If the number of photons is conserved, it has to, it, the density has to grow. Okay, I see. Right, because this is the... Good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm red-faced. Uh, this is in the notes, actually. So please look it up in the notes. I should be able to answer right away. I'm not able to right now. Sorry. I'm going to, uh, to cut this from, from, from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you haven't asked anything. I, I haven't heard this question. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, can I see the, the argument here? How does this? Uh... Right, because this is the energy density. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so, so okay, good. I, I think that's the way it works. So this is the energy density. Okay, so the uh, energy of, okay, the number of photons is conserved. Okay, good, that's the way it goes. The number of photons is conserved, uh, but it's, the density goes down, right? So, uh, because the universe expands, Right, so you have R three from uh, for the volume element from here, which gives you an energy density going 
down like 1 over r. And if the energy goes down like 1 over r, uh, and the number of photons is conserved, the energy of every photon has to go down. And this is exactly uh, the right uh, formula if you look at the redshift formula. The redshift formula is the ratio of the scale factors. So the number of photons is conserved, the energy of photons goes down. Right? Yeah. If not, but of course, well, uh, what happens with it? Well, this is interacting uh, gravitationally with all stuff around here, right? So it's interacting with gravitational field, it's interacting with matter. Well, in some sense, I mean, through these equations. So good, good. So in other words, number of photons conserved, uh, the red shifted, the energy goes down, period. Yeah. That's what it is. I don't have to cut the end of the lecture then. <laughs> Except for having been embarrassed for a while. Any other questions? Well, if not, then uh, well, I wish you uh, all those who want to take the exam uh, success. Uh, let me just uh, uh, a slight word of warning for this exam. Uh, I, I tend to be very generous with the notes because it's not a compulsive lecture, but I don't tend to be overly generous. So you have a list of questions. And one way of preparing yourself for the exam is you take a list of questions, take each question, and see if you can answer, if you can talk about at least 10 minutes uh, for or more for every question, because all these questions, I've been talking about them for at least a half a lecture or, or more quite often. So if you can't, then this means that you have to revise better, right? So if you get a question and you can just tell me two things which uh, are vaguely related to this and, uh, and, uh, and, and a lot of other things which people try to do, then it doesn't work with me. So, uh, and, and so as I said, you have the list of questions, so it's easy to prepare yourself for this. And so test yourself like that uh, and uh, and well, I wish you all uh, a, a very good uh, one in the exam and uh, either in a few days or in another session and a wonderful summer and uh, further academic successes. Thank you. And so, and yes. Uh, and so the, the sorry, but the, the idea is to, to prepare this and I don't know, to draw sketches and formulas on sheets of paper and to hold this in the camera or shall we do this live? Well, uh, yeah, ideally, if you have a tablet, then that would be great. If you have a, maybe some people have a whiteboard behind, that would be great. If not, then you'll be writing, you know, make sure that you can orient your camera to a, somewhere where you write and I'll be watching uh, upside down. I can read upside down what you're writing and, and then okay. pick up my mind. Let but, me also mention okay. that there will be a, a, a general activity three in this fall. So just a, where I, I'll be talking about gravitational radiation, if you're interested. So, and other topics uh, as we go. Okay, so as I said, have a great summer and see you some other lectures or in yeah, the exam. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See you then. Bye. 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 Bye.